Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah. In this video, we're going to be making this layered Gerbera shadow box using a free SVG, which is available from my website, craftwithsarah.com. So if I just put this up to the camera, you can see all of the different layers inside there. And I made this extra special by using alcohol markers to color in the petals to make them look a little bit more realistic and to give lots of different shades and effects to all of the petals. There are a few different ways you can get my free Gerbera Daisy SVG file. The first is just to go to the homepage of my website craftwithsarah.com and then scroll down the page. So at the moment, because this is quite a new file, it's still on the home page. So you can click in there to go to the article and download the file. However, it won't always be there because this page only shows my latest tutorials. So eventually it will drop off. Another way you can find it is by going to the free SVGs link in the top. This shows all of my free SVGs. And when all the pictures load, you'll be able to see all of them. So you can just look through the list until you find the Gerbera one and then you can download it once you're logged in or click through to the tutorial. You can also follow the link in the description of this video to go straight to the page. One last thing you can do is type Gerbera into the search box on the top right. Click search and then that will find the article for you so I can click into there and it tells me everything about the file with some photos and it will let me download it. If you're not logged in, you'll need to log into your account so it will show you a login form instead of a download button. If you don't have an account, you can register one for free. Once you're logged in, you get the download now button so you can just click that and it will download the zip folder directly to your computer. You'll need to unzip the folder before you can put the SVG into Design Space. If you look at the article, I've got links there for how to unzip folders on all the different types of computer and devices. So go ahead, grab the file, and then we'll find out how to make it. Once you've unzipped the folder, it's time to upload the design into Cricut Design Space. So open up Design Space and start a new project, and then click into Upload down the left. Click Upload Image. And then this will let you either click browse to find the file on your computer or if you've got it open in a explorer window like this you can drag and drop it so here are the files that are included in the zip folder and i've also got a copy of the original zip folder here so you want to make sure you don't use the files that are in that zip folder you want the ones that you have unzipped following the links in the tutorials that i just showed you the file to put into Cricut Design Space is the one that starts SVG underscore in the file name. That's the only file that will work in Design Space. So don't upload any of the other ones, just the one that starts SVG in the file name. Now yours might not show the blue PS. Mine's just doing that because I have SVG files set to open in Photoshop. Yours might show your browser icon, for example, Internet Explorer, Chrome or Safari, or it might even be something different to that. It also might show up as an HTML file, but don't worry about any of that. As long as it starts SVG in the file name, that is the correct file. So I'm going to drag and drop this into Design Space and it's going to upload and then it should look like this after you've uploaded it. If your screen looks different and you see all of the colors in separate spaces on the screen, that means you've accidentally uploaded one of the other files and not the SVG one. So if that happens, just click cancel and then try again and make sure you choose the one that starts SVG. Okay, so this is ready for me to go. I can press upload on the bottom right and then it will appear into your recent uploads. So then you can click on that one and then go insert images and it will put it onto the screen. Now by default it should come in at 7.75 inches and it's a square so it will be the same width and height. To change the width and height, firstly measure your shadow box so you know how big you want the flower to be or if you're making a greetings card then make sure you resize it so it will go on the front. When you're resizing, make sure the padlock icon between the width and height boxes is closed. That means when you resize it, you only need to set either the width or the height and the other one will change automatically in proportion. 
So for example, if I wanted to make this five inches, I only need to put a five in the width and press enter on my keyboard and the height changes automatically. If I just undo that by pressing the undo button and show you what would happen if the padlock was unlocked. So I'm gonna unlock it by clicking on it. And now if I was to change the width to five, you see the height didn't actually change, so it now looks squished and out of proportion. You don't want to do that. So that's why you want to make sure when you resize, the padlock icon is closed so that it all changes correctly. So go ahead and resize it to however big you want to make it. And then when you're happy to cut it out, click make it in the top right of the screen. This will show you all of the different colors. So you can change your paper size if you want to and go through each of the different colors individually to change it to the paper size you're going to be using. And then when you're happy, press continue and that will go through and connect to your Cricut machine and then follow the instructions on screen to cut everything out of your colored card. I can't show you how to do that right now because my computer isn't actually hooked up to my Cricut right now. But if you have any problems cutting it out, then leave me a comment below and I would do my best to help out. So now we're going to jump into the flower assembly once it's all been cut out. So here are my layers all cut out and I've also cut my backing paper to go inside the frame. Now you might notice that I've got some detail on all of these flowers and that's because I decided to colour them in with some alcohol markers to give it a bit more of a realistic petal effect and also to make my two pinks balance a bit because they were very very different. If I just show you the original light pink it was just way too light so by colouring it I managed to get its beautiful dark colour. So for the backing piece, this is going to go inside my frame. I've got my frame here, I've taken it apart. And inside your shadow box, you should have a spacer, which looks like this. And to get the size that you need to cut your backing paper, you want to measure from one side all the way to the other side. So edge to edge, and that will give you the size for your backing paper. So mine was 8.5 inches. Now I was very silly and didn't actually measure my flower before I cut it out. Um, so if I just put that on there, that's where that's going to sit. So all of that will be hidden by my frame. And then you'll see my flower only just fits inside there. So it probably is a little bit big. I cut the flower at 7.5 inches. I'm thinking I probably should have done 7 inches. But it still fits, so that's the important thing. Okay, so first thing I would do is to show you how I coloured the petals with alcohol markers. So I've cut another one of the layers just to kind of show you. And that is this layer here. So what I did was I lined it up on there. And then, so this is what it looks like coloured in. I put the next layer on top so that I know which petals are going to need the colouring and which ones don't because I, you see I didn't colour the whole thing in, just the petals that were going to show. For my lighter cardstock I used two kind of bright colours of pink. So these are Nouveau alcohol markers. I really like them because they've got two different tips, a chisel end and a fine point end. So these two colours I've used are called Dragon Fruit and paradise pink and then for the darker card I didn't want this to be really really dark with the color on top so I changed it to a lighter pink so for the darker card I used paradise pink and pink lady and again these are Nouveau markers okay so to make sure I knew which petals to color in I got my pink and um, on the light one Nope, the darker one. I put the darker one on first. I'm trying to remember. So um, what I did was I just put a tiny little dot in all of the petals that you can see so I know which ones to colour in. And then I can get that layer and then colour them in. I'm going to put a bit of scrap paper underneath so I don't colour on my mat 
And then what I did was I got the chisel end of the Nouveau marker and kind of treated it like I'm going around the edge of the petal. So in big bold strokes, go from the middle, along one edge, and then down the other, and then fill in the gap with three more strokes, and that should be enough. So don't worry that it appears really dark at the moment and you can see all the brush strokes. As the alcohol starts to evaporate, it will blend in better and it will also go a bit lighter. So don't worry if you go into the other petals, that doesn't matter because they'll be covered over with the other layers. But you do want to make sure you go down right to the middle to make sure there aren't any bits of uncolored card just around where that middle bit comes out. So I'm trying to keep my patterns and brush strokes all going the same way so it's consistent. So I'm going out around one edge, down to the other, and then one, two, three. And sometimes I might just need to do a couple more strokes if I've missed some pieces. So one, two, around the edge. And that time you see I've missed a bit, so let's just do it again. And then one, two, and that needed four. Okay, so once I've done that, see I've actually missed some there as well. Once I've done that, I then wanted to add a little bit of extra depth, so I took a different colour, this one is Paradise Pink, and just one up and down the edge, so just one and two around the edge. So, one and two. I'm not being super neat about it, That chisel edge is really nice because it gives you a thick line and the colours will kind of blend in a bit. And once the ink dries, it will give a lovely appearance. So I did that for every single layer until I'd got them all finished. All right, so let's put all these back together. And they are symmetrical, all the petals. There's kind of eight lots of the same, so it is fairly easy to put together, especially once you've coloured it, because then you can see where everything goes, because you're putting it on top of the bits that haven't been coloured. Okay, so that's my layers. Now I can start sticking them together. So let's get the bottom two. And then for this one, I'm going to turn it upside down and add some foam pads. You can use any foam pads you like. Um, the ones I like are Foam Squares by Dot and Dab. They are pretty big, so I need to cut them to make them smaller, just so they go a bit further. But I've tried loads of brands, and these ones I found are by far the easiest to pull the little bits of paper off the top. So they're the quickest to use and the least stressful. I hate it when you use foam pads and it's really hard to get those top bits off because it just gets so frustrating trying to get stuff done. And I'm normally in a bit of a hurry, so anything that can speed it up is good with me. So you can see these come off really easily. I'm just tucking my nail under them and it comes straight off. Make sure you put some foam pads in the middle so that your middle part has some support. And then I'm going to line this up. Make sure it's lined up all the way around. Gently position it on to start with, just to make sure you're happy with the positioning. And then push down to seal all those foam pads. I've got the next one. So I'm going to do the same thing, add some foam and if you wanted more of a flat design, maybe to go on a scrapbook page or on a greetings card, then you could use glue instead of foam for all of the different layers. Um, it'll still look really pretty with glue, you just don't get as much of that 3D appearance. So here we go. Line this up. And push down to seal. 
There's one more round of petals to go. And a bit of foam in all of the petals. These foam pads I'm using are quite thick, so you do get a really nice 3D appearance. You can buy ones that are kind of half the thickness, which is a nice sort of in-between of the standard foam and just using glue. So if you want a more subtle effect, but you don't want to go all the way down to glue, then try looking at the thickness levels. Um, with your foam pads, I think the thinnest ones you can get are one millimetre thick. These ones are, I'm not actually sure, they are quite thick, it says two millimetres. Okay, so let's line this up. And push down to seal. Next, I've got the middle of the flower and this is four separate pieces. For the thinner parts, I'm going to glue these onto the solid parts because they're very thin around the edge, so it'll be really hard to get the foam in. My favourite glue for paper craft projects is Kalal. I discovered this a couple of months ago and it is brilliant. So it is see-through, it's transparent glue and it dries transparent. It is a solvent glue, so it's got a little bit of a smell to it and you need to use it in a well-ventilated room. Um, but it's so good on cardstock, you can put loads on and it doesn't bend or warp the card like other glues can do. So I've tried tacky glue and PVA glue in the past and it can make the card bend. This one doesn't do that. But because it comes in such a big bottle, that's not an awful lot of good when I'm trying to do things like this. So I found these little needle tip bottles on Amazon and they have this needle tip on them it's so thin so I just put a bit of glue in here and this came in a pack of 12 um, so yeah, I bought it a few months ago I'm still on the first bottle because you can refill them and um, so far I've not had any problems with the top clogging it comes with a little lid so you can keep it nice and sealed and it's amazing so let's turn this little orange piece upside down put a bit of glue in the middle and then because this tip is so fine, I can go around the edge, adding some glue. So I'm going to get a really good stick and I'm not making a mess, as long as I'm careful. Because the needle tip fits into that gap. Then I can turn this over. I found this was one of the hardest ones to line up. There we go. So that's that one, and then I'll do the same with the purple one. And this one is really thin, but this glue just makes it a dream. It can get a little bit stringy, kind of like a glue gun. Um, so watch out for that if you do use this glue, but it doesn't happen very often and they're pretty easy to pull off if you do get one. Let's stick that on there. There we go. Alright, so now we just need to put these onto the flower, so I'll start with the middle and Use some foam again. Oops. There we are. And then because I've got one bit stuck to my finger, I'll just put it in the middle there. Okay, so now this one I do find hard to line up and I'm not quite sure why I find it so difficult because it is symmetrical so it shouldn't take that long but every time I've tried I have struggled so you know it's lined up because it's got the little bubbles on and the petals around the edge they almost had it then and then I moved it there okay <laughs> that's done 
and then one more my purple piece in the middle this one's much easier all right there we go that is my flower all done very pretty and now it's ready to go into the frame I'm going to glue this into the middle of my backing paper so let's put some glue on the back I don't know why I always draw pretty patterns with the glue <laughs> force of habit I think put my lid back on and then put this in the middle and this is probably where I do it wrong <laughs> not very good at getting stuff lined up in the middle but that looked like a pretty good first attempt the nice thing about glue is you've got that wiggle room to sort of slide it about if it's not quite right I'm just going to double check my spacer fits, which it does. So I'm going to push that down a bit. Not too much because I don't want the glue to sort of smush out under the sides. But that is enough. And then I wouldn't actually put this in the frame properly until the glue's dried because you don't want the flower to slide off. But I'm going to do it just to show you. I haven't got the glass in the frame at the moment because it would reflect all of my camera lights and you'd only be able to see the lights, not actually what's inside it. So if you were doing this, the glass would be in, then the spacer, and then your design can just sit on the back. And then the frame goes in there. You see I've broken my little hanging part off there, so I need to work out how to hang it. Close those little pieces and then when you turn it over, there is your gorgeous Gerbera frame all finished. So I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial on how to make a paper Gerbera with your Cricut machine. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more Cricut crafts. And of course, get the free SVG from craftwithsarah.com. Thank you for watching. Bye.